We are in a leafy eastern suburb of Sydney, David, just the very stomping ground for the car we're reviewing this week, which is... A large sedan, the Lexus LS 500. Lexus uh, came out about uh, 30 odd years ago with the LS 400, which I actually quite liked. It was unique for its era, had a little U-shaped key, so extra security, a V8, relatively small power compared to what this has, David, which mm. is uh, 310 kilowatts. Uh, from a V6 from twin a, turbo. And they've done away with many of the V8s. Now even the Land Cruiser doesn't have a V8. The Lexus LX 500, uh, which the review will come very shortly. That's also a, a twin turbo V6. And there's a petrol in that one too. And why not? You can get plenty of power and do really need for this sort of car that surging, rumbling sound of a V8? I don't think so. No, well, it's certainly nice to have, but uh, a lot when you go to the petrol pump. The front of this car, David, it's got these blade LED headlights, mm. which they're just, they were extraordinary looking things. And you see them on at night and they, they sort of do this little dance. I think the headlight arrangement is just beautiful. But look at this beautiful complex set of lines over yeah, the bonnet. Line here, a line here. Absolutely beautiful. The spindle grill, David, of course, it's a very complex set of lines uh, and, and enormous. But you can see there's a bar across the middle. And the Lexus badge contains the radar for the radar cruise control. And then there's a couple of uh, sensors down below for the uh, sonar. This is huge and I think fortunately the number plate breaks the confrontational aspect of the front. Or it'd look like it's eating itself, but it is surrounded by more chrome than I've seen since the 1940 Ford. 20 inch wheels, they, these look absolutely enormous, but they're 20 inch, I suppose 20 inches is enormous. I, I thought immediately they were 21 or 22. I thought they were 22s, but you can see this graceful bulge. Mm. over the side. This is a very long car. Now this is halfway between the old long and short wheelbase Lexus. So this came out last year. About what 12 months ago would that mm. be? Approximately. And what they decided to do was because uh, the long wheelbase one wasn't selling particularly well. So they've gotten this one in between. And what it's meant to do, David, is to allow the rear seat passenger this is really a chauffeur-driven limousine. It's a full-size car. Mm. It allows plenty of room in the back, especially in chauffeur mode, which we're going to show you now. Oh, and before I forget, David, I'm going to stand just here and just see if you can see. Would you mind opening that door for me? Just watch this. That car has gone up that much. Can you see how much that is? It's gone up that much, front and back and that's to allow easier ingress and egress. Look at this. Look at that. Now I can put up my pouffet. Uh, there, my pouffet. I'm gonna pop that up like so. It's coming up very slowly. Everything operates at an elegant slowness. Oh, but look, I can, I can do that. Now I'm just going to tilt my seat back back now you probably wouldn't want to i don't know how far forward this can that's quite quite a way forward now you couldn't travel like this uh, because it's not legal because you could slip under the seat belt but i'm just going to put that up so you could travel like this though there'd be no reason why you couldn't in the back i've got this absolutely fabulous sunshade dash vip keep onlookers out out shade and I've also got one at the back and that goes down whenever you put it into reverse so just in case there's also a plethora of speakers a vanity mirror just here a vanity mirror just here and I can just uh, yeah I can see that my do is a little bit windswept but that's okay there's a couple of coat hooks vents either side in fact, the back seat comp uh, passengers are really well catered for. There's a couple of screens here. The thing I like about this is that one press lowers the screen and another press lowers the window. 
from the rear, I've got my pouffe down, but from the rear I can see that David is driving in regal splendor as all limousine drivers should. He's got his smart mirror activated. David, do you want to deactivate your smart mirror? Hello. Now reactivate it. Don't run into anything. <laughs> And you'll notice also I was able to turn my rear media screen on by using these controls here. Just this sea of tranquility. I've got more space than I could ever need with my legs straight out in a recently returned from overseas trip kind of way. I've come from my first class cabin in the plane and I'm sitting in my first class cabin in the car. Now I can use audio visual there if I want, I can plug it into my phone, I can use the plugs in the back. My driver only needs to concentrate on driving. David, are you concentrating on driving? Absolutely. Home, thank you, Brown. Do you have your massage seat on? I don't have my massage seat on, no, I, I had a massage on the plane. The gear lever is a little bit like one of the old fashioned electric cars, one of the old-fashioned Priuses. This of course has four-wheel steering, which makes it incredibly maneuverable around town. So this great huge car, it feels really nimble. And the other thing is that the head-up display is that is as wide as this dash, like it's about that wide. The seats have heating and cooling and massage, all controlled through the center screen. I've always been a big Lexus fan and there's nothing about this car I don't like. I mean, it's in a segment that is dying, yes, I understand that. Now that we've stopped, I can go through some of the controls. The dash is beautifully designed. The designs on the doors, they can be tailored to you. There's a whole bunch of different ones to choose from. You still have the Lexus clock. It's this graceful piece of elegant architecture. And there are plenty of buttons. It's not a button overload like we saw in the early noughties. This has just enough. The rear camera could probably pick that up. My phone just disconnected then from CarPlay. That does happen from time to time, which is really annoying. Up the top are the drive mode and traction control buttons. So I've left it in comfort now and we'll just see how that feels. Should make the suspension even softer. And finally, down here on the centre console are the heated seat controls, rear window shade control and heated steering wheel. You can put the whole thing into automatic and the climate concierge will take care of all of that for you. The immediate thing you notice when you get into the Lexus is that the pedals are a long way away. In fact, Evan felt that they needed to be adjustable I think it is a process of encouraging the chauffeur to be as close to the steering wheel. The other aspect with driving is that things are quiet. The very last thing you want are things that annoy drivers such as electronic sounding blinkers that are loud. But not only then do they annoy the driver, but they can annoy the passenger as well. So the vehicle doesn't bing and give audio warnings that are intrusive to anyone in the car. There's a lot of things about this that errs on the side of smoothness. So the adaptive cruise control, if a vehicle has been in front of you and it pulls out of the way and you've got a big gap and it allows the car to build up speed, it does it very gently. I tried to find out whether you could change that, but I couldn't find it in the time available. David, that's all this week for the Lexus. I, I think it does everything that it says and more. I think this is perfection, but for over 200 grand, it would want to be 206 odd thousand. There's, al money. there's also the hybrid version, which is the same price. Yeah, not quite as much power, but I'm sure being a electrification, it would operate very well. Yeah. Uh, as always, hit like. And leave a comment. And subscribe by hitting the little round thing. <laughs>